In the 36th year of the Hijrah, the first civil war took place between the Sahaba. Our talk today is not about that, it's about one anecdote. And from that anecdote, we'll begin our talk. As you're aware, there were a number of civil wars, and the first of them, the Battle of Jamal, was between Ali radiallahu on one side, and Talha and Zubair and Aish radiallahu anhum on the other side. And the story of that is not relevant to us today. One anecdote. As you're aware, it was a very tragic war, and in fact, our scholars say neither side wanted to fight, but khair, shaitan caused this to happen. But for sure, there was a lot of tension, a lot of, you know, acrimony is going to happen for political reasons. And unfortunately, Talha, one of the Ashram Mubashara, he was killed on the battlefield. The most famous martyr on that day was Talha, radiallahu an. And when Ali found out, Ali's on the other side, radiallahu an, he cried and he said, bring Talha's son to me. Bring Talha's son to me, Imran ibn Talha. So Imran was brought, and Ali stood up and hugged Imran, the son of Talha. And he made dua for Talha. And he said to Imran, the son of Talha, that, Wallahi, I am optimistic that your father and me are amongst those whom Allah revealed in the Quran, the verse, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِم مِّنْ غِلٍّ إِخْوَانًا عَلَىٰ سُرِرٍ مُتَقَابِلِينَ We shall remove the hatred that was in their hearts. And they shall be brethren on couches reclining, facing each other in Jannah. Now before I go on, imagine the situation. On the one side, you know, Talha radiallahu has been killed, right? The forces that caused it, I mean, whoever did it is on the other side, is obviously the side of Ali radiallahu anhu. And Ali is distressed, he's saddened, and he hugs Imran. And he says, look, whatever happened, it's something what it wasn't intended, I didn't want this to happen. And whatever is in our hearts in this dunya, I am optimistic that inshallah, the both of us will get to Jannah. And the both of us will be on reclining couches. And the both of us will have pure hearts. Two of the people in the gathering stood up angrily. And they said, Ya Ali radiallahu anhu, this is not fair. How can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause them to enter Jannah when we have been fighting them? Like either we're right or they're right. Like this is not, this is not right. You're the right person. They're going to the other place, not going up there. That's what they're trying to say. And Ali radiallahu became so angry. He said to these two, get away from my camp and go to another land. You have nothing to do with me. And by the way, the, some of the followers of Ali radiallahu they always were a little bit exaggerating in his status. And we see this to this day as we're aware. So the point is that he hugged Imran and he then gave him a gift. And he said, if you're ever in any need of anything, then consider me to be your elder brother, your uncle. I'm here for you. Now, this is the anecdote that we're going to start our brief khatira today with. And that khatira is the reality of having a clean heart even if there are issues in this dunya. You see, sometimes our preachers speak not precise language and they say that forgiveness is the default and ideal. But when you look at the lives of the Sahaba, when you look at the reality of what it means, yes, it is good to forgive and forget, but sometimes you cannot completely forgive. Sometimes there is some negative in this dunya but still you must learn to overcome that negativity and have a pure heart and this is something that we can achieve if we teach the people that you cannot have any problem with anybody in this dunya wallahi it is unachievable even the sahaba had back and forth verbally and sometimes politically and sometimes even yes with bloodshed as well but believe it or not in their hearts, they all recognize that in the eyes of Allah, inshallah, they're all striving for piety. In the eyes of Allah, they're wanting Jannah. There was still some ukhuwa despite the problems of this dunya. This is the reality of struggling to maintain Islamic brotherhood. You shall never attain full, you know, lovey-dovey type of brother. That doesn't exist in this world. Wallahi, it has never existed and it shall never exist. What you can strive for is you live a civil life with your Muslim brothers. Even if you disagree, your heart should not hold any 
rancor, ill will. The Arabic term is ghil, which is in the Quran. We shall remove the ghil from their hearts. What does ghil mean? Ghil means you want harm to come to your brother. This is what ghil means, right? Another meaning of uh, 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 of ghal is to tie up and in chains. So it is as if you want your brother to be tied up and in chains, right? So ghilal is like chains, right? So the concept of, you know, being tied down, the concept of a type of punishment, that is ghil. It is not allowed for the mu'min to have ghil in his heart for his brother, even if he doesn't get along with him. Do you understand what I'm trying to preach here? That middle ground. You don't have to get along with everybody. You don't have to be lovey-dovey with everybody. But you should strive amongst the righteous, amongst those who are, that are praying and fasting, amongst the mu'mineen, the salihin, the muttaqeen, that your heart is pure. You don't wish them any harm and evil in this world, much less in the akhirah. And this is what we see in the reality of Ali radiallahu an, that I pray and I hope, I'm optimistic that this verse in the Quran, it applies to me and even those on the other side of the battlefield. Now today's brief khatira, seven points from the Quran and Sunnah about how to practically achieve the lack of ghil. That's the ideal, to have no ghil. Once again, I reiterate, you don't have to be friends or friendly with everybody. There is a minimum. What is the minimum? If you meet them, you say salam. That's the minimum. As long as you're saying salam, right? And there's a cordial salam wa alaykum wa alaykum as salam. There's no boycotting of the tongue, right? Then inshallah, you are not sinful. Anything beyond this is good. And the more you go, the better. But the sin, the Prophet ﷺ said, it is not allowed for two believers for more than three days, as you know, we went over this in other lectures, to boycott one another verbally, so much so that if they meet in the street, they turn around and neither of them says salam to the other. This is not allowed. Sometimes things happen. A bad business, sometimes even between a man and woman, a divorce takes place and there's a lot of, hey, you know, just bad memories and whatever. Minimal salam. Yes, assalamu alaikum wa alaikum as salam. Sometimes you don't get along with everybody. You don't have to go beyond this. And if you do more, the more, the better it is. But it is not obligatory to go beyond the minimum. Jayid, how, are we, how can we overcome ghil in our hearts? I'm going to mention seven things very quickly. And all of these are from the hadith. One, two, and three are in one hadith. In the beautiful hadith in the Sunan of At-Tirmidhi. In fact, this hadith is the most explicit hadith about how to remove ghil. Because it literally begins, ثَلَاثٌ لَا يَغَلُّ عَلَيْهِنَّ قَلْبُ مُسْلِمٍ Three things shall never allow ghil to remain in the heart of the Muslim. You can't get more clear than this. Three things, if you do them, it shall eliminate that rancor, that ill will. You're going to sleep and you just wish to punch somebody. You wish something would happen. No, that's not. Have a pure heart. Even if you don't like the person that much, have a pure heart as much as you can. Three things. Number one, our Prophet ﷺ said, إِخْلَاصُ الْعَمَلْ لِلَّهِ Doing your amal, mukhlis for the sake of Allah. Whenever you do something, don't do it for other people. Do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You train yourself to have ikhlas. When you have ikhlas for Allah, it will help you overcome your ghil. When you pray, when you fast, when you give charity, you train your heart to always monitor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you monitor Allah, it will become easier for you to let go of the grudge, to not be so bitter and angry. Number two, munasahatu a'immatil muslimin. Wanting the best and giving nasiha to the leaders of the Muslims. Wanting the best. The leaders here means both political and clergy and scholarship. When, whenever the Quran says, Wulat al Amr, whenever the Quran says, Wali al Amr, generally it, it applies also to the political, but as Ibn Abbas said, and also to those of religious authority amongst you. These are the leaders, the one in the political, the other in the spiritual realm. In other words, don't desire to see the downfall of the ummah politically and academically. Don't wish that the leaders are all evil and you find their faults and you put them down. Don't wish that the scholars and their inheritors of the Prophet oh, all our ulama, all our Mulvi class, all our... This is not healthy. 
It's just not healthy to put down, to make fun of, to always find the faults of the leaders. Have a pure heart. This doesn't mean the leaders are all pious, but you should not busy yourself with the faults of the leaders. If you busy yourself with their faults, what have you accomplished? And this is not to exonerate what they're doing, as you're aware, but it is rather you are responsible for yourself. And if you must, then wish good for the ummah. Try your best to help whatever you can, the leaders of the ummah. And again, it is not of the way of our righteous you know, scholars to associate too much with the leaders, either always putting them down or always praising them up. You let them be. But if you're gonna constantly want to destroy them verbally, and the leaders of the Muslims in terms of the clergy and the ulama, if you constantly make fun of them and put them down, then your heart is not pure. That doesn't mean all clergy are good, but you should not be following their faults and making a big deal of it. So munasaha, having nasiha in your heart for the leadership, means your heart is pure for the, for the ones in charge, is gonna be pure for those under them. And number three, وَلُزُومُ جَمَاعَتِهِمْ Stick with the jama'ah of the believers. Be involved with your community. Subhanallah, one thing I've noticed, wallahi brothers and sisters, those people who are constantly, constantly creating drama in the community or online, you never find them active in the masajid. You never find them being involved with their local ground community. And this is the reality across the globe. There are some people, they have made a name for themselves, you know, creating drama, putting, you know, so much fitna out there. And their local masjid is unaware of them. Completely unaware. Our Prophet ﷺ said, stick with the jama'ah of the believers. Humanize Islam. Be involved with your communities. Stick with the group of believers. When you're interacting with other Muslims, automatically you will understand we are all human. I make mistakes, they make mistakes. You will be involved in something which is tangible good, real good, which is in our communities. So these three things our Prophet ﷺ said, if you do them, لا يغل عليهن قلب مسلم. Your qalb will have no ghil. Number one, ikhlas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything you do number two have good thoughts and have nasiha you want to have good for the leaders of the of, of the muslims number three stick with the jama'ah of muslims we move on to other uh, things mentioned in the quran and sunnah number four the quran tells us of the ways that you can remove ghil from your heart is to think of something that will be better for you when you get rid of that ghil what is that allah says in the quran فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ if you forgive and you try to mend with your brother, Allah shall reward you. You see, when somebody does you wrong, you become full of your ego. I am not going to get, let this go. I'm not going to. But then when Allah says to you, don't worry about you and him. Get me involved. I shall give you more than what he took away. فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى Allah. I shall reward you. Don't worry about him. When you think along these verses, you know, message, what happens is you disconnect from the anger against him and you connect with the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't you want the rahmah of Allah? Allah says, don't worry, I will give you ajr directly. So for the sake of Allah, let go of the grudge. Now again, I want to be precise here. This does not mean that you must forgive him on the day of judgment. If somebody has really wronged you, it is possible to have no ghil and still get your reward on the day of judgment. This is what I want to stress here. I'm trying to teach Islam in a practical and real manner, not in the flowery language that sometimes people preach that is beyond reality. Sometimes people really stab you in the back. They really hurt you. They really do something wrong and you find it difficult to forgive them. And sometimes they do it repeatedly. You know what? It is possible to live your life without any ghil and still get your full ajr from them and from Allah. How so? Go to sleep and have no animosity towards them in this dunya. And say, inshallah, on the day of judgment, Allah will give me what I need. That's it. You've achieved it. Remove the animosity against Him. Remove that hatred. Because you know what? When you're bitter, when you're full of anger and rage, Wallahi, sometimes, look at the brothers of Yusuf, you will go down a negative path and you will do something you yourself will regret. So, you don't have to forgive in this, uh, you don't have to give, forgive in the akhirah, forgive in this world. This is what Allah is asking you. Forgive in this world. In this world, live a carefree life. Say, khalas, that's what the Day of Judgment is for. You go to sleep, clean heart, no ghil. 
and then you expect, oh Allah, you said, فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ So in this world, I have no ghil, but on the day of judgment, I want my haq. This is your haq. And if you do so, you have achieved a higher maqam than the one wanting revenge. So this is point number four. Put Allah into the picture and Allah shall reward you. Point number five, understand the number one tactic of shaitan is to make these issues between you and your brother a cause of disunity for the ummah. In a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أَلَا إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَئِسَ أَنْ يُعْبَدَ فِي جَزِيلَةِ الْعَرَبِ Shaytan has given up hope that he shall ever be worshipped in the Arabian Peninsula. Idolatry will not return there as long as the ummah is here. There's no idolatry in Bilad al-Haramain. They're not going to have idols over there. وَلَكِنْ But Shaytan has one tactic. He has not going to get you through idols. What is he going to get you with? فِي التَّحْرِيشِ بَيْنَكُمْ Causing ill will between you. That is the tactic of shaitan. So, if you go to sleep and your heart is full of anger and rage against another person, know that this is shaitan winning. You don't want shaitan to win. As I said, get rid of the anger and if you really must, link it to Allah and say, Oh Allah, you will give me what I want on the day of judgment. Again, I'm not saying you have to forgive everything. By the way, sometimes you should. When should you forgive? When should you hold till the day of judgment? It's a case-by-case -case basis. A one-off mistake from a righteous person who comes to ask forgiveness, Wallahi, you should forgive. Why shouldn't you forgive? One-off mistake, he says he's sorry, and he tries to make up to you, then really you are being stubborn if you don't forgive. But persistent mistake and constant dhulm, well then maybe you have the right, you know what, on the day of judgment. But even then, keep your heart pure. So, next point we said is to understand this is the plot of shaitan. Point number six here, second to last, of the ways to prevent ghil from taking root in your heart is to follow the prophetic guidelines of not getting involved in ghiba, backbiting, avoiding the gatherings where namima is taking place, having good thoughts of your brother, not having su'adhan, minding your own business of the perfection of one's iman is to leave what doesn't concern him. Listen to me carefully. One of the main causes of hatred seeping into your heart is because you and I have not followed the prophetic methodology. We get involved in gossip. We're talking about other people. We're interested in what they say, what happened there. SubhanAllah, follow the sunnah. Cut off from that which has no business of yours. If some news reaches you, think the best thoughts of your brother. Don't get involved in ghibah. Avoid namima. If somebody comes to you with namima, turn it back and say, this is an imam, you're spreading namima. I don't want anything to do with this. If we follow the prophetic sunnah, maybe 80% of the causes of ghil will come. Much of our ghil, it comes because we have not blocked the avenues that our Prophet told us to block. Talking about other people, being sarcastic, talking about namima, having bad thoughts when, when something ambiguous, an ambiguous phrase, an ambiguous phrase is heard, shaitan comes, you read in the worst meaning then ghil is going to happen. So this is point number seven. Uh, po sorry, point number six. Follow the prophetic methodology. And the final point is something that our scholars mention. There's no explicit Quran and Sunnah, but our scholars mention this. In fact, one can derive it from a weak hadith in the Muslim Imam Ahmad. You all know the famous hadith of when the Prophet was sitting, he said, a man shall enter from that door who is a person of Jannah. You know, we've gone over this hadith many times. And, you know, Ibn Umar went and lived with him for three days. And then he found out this was a man. What did he say? Every night I make sure I go to sleep with a clean heart. So from this we get point number seven. Muhasaba of the qalb. Check your heart early. If you find symptoms of rage, symptoms of anger, if you think of somebody and your blood begins to boil, well then, you had better eliminate this. That's just not healthy for you. It's not healthy for you to have that much rage against somebody who's lowering his head to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, over and over, I'm not saying forgive on the day of judgment, but forgive in this dunya. If you're able to as much as you can, let go of hatred and ill will and take it on the day of judgment. So one of the ways you do this, muhasabatun nafs. If you allow the hatred to seep in day in, day out, then you become obsessed with that person. When you wake up, when you go to sleep, when you're driving your car, you're only thinking about that person. I wish he's destroyed. I what do you gain? 
What do you gain? Your life has become miserable, not the other person's. Let go. Let go for the sake of Allah. And you will live a pure life. And Allah Azza wa Jal will reward you for all of that. Final hadith and we conclude. Hadith is in Ibn Majah, authentic. That Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Al As uh, uh, said that somebody came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, which person is the best person? Ayyu nasi afdal? Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, كُلُّ مَخْمُومِ الْقَلْبِ صَدُوقِ اللِّسَانِ Everybody who has مَخْمُومِ الْقَلْبِ مَخْمُومِ is a bit of a technical advanced word. It actually means clean heart. مَخْمُومِ الْقَلْبِ صَدُوقِ اللِّسَانِ They said, O Messenger of Allah, we know صَدُوقِ اللِّسَانِ is the one who speaks the truth. But what is مَخْمُومِ الْقَلْبِ? What is the one who has a pure heart? Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, listen to this, هُوَ التَّقِي النَّقِي الَّذِي لَا إِثْمَ فِيهِ وَلَا بَغِي وَلَا غِل وَلَا حَسَد التَّقِي النَّقِي He has taqwa in his heart. His heart is pure. His heart has no desire to harm somebody. His heart has no desire for vengeance. His heart has no غِل Literally it says there's no غِل And we said غِل means your blood is boiling against somebody else. His heart has no ghil and his heart has no jealousy. That is the person with the clean heart. Who is the best person? The best person is the one who has a clean heart and a pure tongue. And the Prophet explained, clean heart means no ithim and no ghil and no hasad. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us pure hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all with qalb salim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the ability, the capability to live this life in a stress-free life. This life is short, brothers and sisters. People are dying left and right. We're beginning a new time frame for many of us in this Gregorian calendar. It is the time for muhasabatun nafs. Think of the future. Think of the temporality of this world. Don't hold grudges. Let go for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and live a life with a pure qalb so that on the day of judgment you will meet Allah with قلب سليم جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته فيا ذلي ويا خجلي إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييته تعصيني ولا تخشى من العتب وتخفي الذنب عن خلقي وتأبى في الهوى قربي فتب مما جنيت عسى تعود إلى رضا الرب تعود إلى رضا الرب